to want to do is take a pair of digital calipers and measure the thickness of the material that we're going to be working with. In this case, my material measured 0.72 inches in thickness. So here's a file that I have set up in VCarve. I'm going to show you how to replicate this uh, so that you can adjust it based on the uh, thickness of the material that you're using. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go over to rectangle, make a square rectangle that is uh, 1.5 inches wide by, uh, now the, th the height is actually going to represent the thickness of the material. So if I did 0.72, I end up with a pocket that's 0.72 tall and 1.5 inches wide. Now the, the problem with this is in most cases you will never get uh, the tab to fit in if the pocket is the exact same thickness as the material itself. Usually I'll start by adding three thousandths to that to give myself a little bit of play. Now if I take this rectangle and I come in, now I just add and make it 0.723 and I click OK and apply that. Now the next, I'm going to do a couple different fitments here. So I've got 0.723 and then I'm going to go up by two thousandths and I'm going to make three additional pockets. So the next one I've got here will be 0.725 and apply that. And then I'm going to do 0.727 and apply that. And then the last one will be 0.729. Okay. Now what I want to do is take these and I'm just going to kind of space them out so that uh, they're all in line with a little bit of space between them. I want to make sure that I put them back in order uh, based on the size. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, come through, I'm going to highlight all of these and I'm going to align the centers on them. So now what I did down here was I just put some text in that told me what the, uh, the height is of each of these pockets. And that's easy enough to do. I, you could just go to Arial, um, do a, you know, 0.25 inches tall letters, 0 0.07, uh, sorry, 0.723. And then you could take that text and just stick it in the middle of the box. And it's just a good reference for you. Um, on you know what the measurement is for each of those so you can see what I did here uh, 723 725 now the width on all of these is one and a half inches I'm only concerned about the height on the pocket because I want to make sure that my height measurement uh, gives me a fit a good fit based on the thickness of the material all right so I'm not going to actually do the rest of the text here, but you'll see how it's done down below. Now the other thing I'm going to do is set a box up around this so I can remove it from the material. So let's just do 8 by 2. And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to align all of this. So I'll select everything and align it all vertically. And then if I take these and group them I can align them horizontally as well. Now I'll come back and I'll ungroup them because I need to put dog bones on the corners. Now here's the thing. If I try, because I'm using a quarter inch end mill, the, each of these pockets, if I don't put dog bones, is actually going to come out looking like if I were to do this with a 125 radius and click apply. That's what my pocket would look like. So when I have a square uh, tab that I want to fit in there, it's never going to fit because of the rounded corners. So I have to do dog bones in order to get, allow that to fit. So what we're going to do here is go over to the uh, fillet tool. We're going to select dog bone fillet, and we're going to enter the radius of the tool, not the diameter, but the radius, so half the diameter. So in this case, 0.125. And then all we're going to do is just click on the corners of each of these boxes and you'll see that it makes it adds the dog bone fillet to it and now if I were to take a uh, rectangle here that was uh, let's do one and a half 
1.5 by 0.72. If I were to take that and center it, you can see now how that tab is going to fit in there because the dog bone fillet added a relief in the corner to allow me to put uh, essentially a square peg into that hole. All right, so I've got those set up and that's one of my fitment boxes. Now the other one is going to be this over here. Now the difference here, again, each of these pockets is going to give me a pocket height. Uh, the width is one and a half inches on all of them. Now what this uh, test piece is going to do is I'm going to vary the width. So the height is already determined by the thickness of the material. So on this, I know that my pockets are 1.5 over here. I want to give myself a little bit of um, fitment in there. So what I'm going to do is make these tabs smaller. And I'm going to do the same thing by two thousandths. Again, if I made this tab one and a half inches, it's never going to fit in. You'd have to really bang it in hard or hope that there was some tolerance in your machine that allowed that to fit. So I'm going to start by making this first tab 1.48 inches. Then I'm going to go down. On this time, I'm only going to go down one thousandth per uh, rotation here. And that's because I, I want to get a pretty tight fit. And this is going to give me four thousandths um, to play with between from one tab to the other. So I got one four eight, then one four seven, four six, and then one four five. Now, how I made this uh, same thing is is pretty straightforward. I just took a made a rectangle that was two point seven five by two point seven five. I'm going to move this over to here, and then I made rectangles that represented the tabs. So what I'm doing is the height is going to be the 0.72 and the width we're going to start with the 1.48 and we'll put that right here. Then we're going to do, we're actually going to have four of them here. So we're going to select the next one and this one is going to be 0.47 and then the next one is going to be 0.46 and then the last one will be oops uh, the last one here is going to be 4.5 so we'll come up change that to 1.45 click OK now we can use some alignment tools just to set these tabs up so if I select this top tab and then hold the shift key and select the center piece. I can come over here and I can align it horizontally and then I can also uh, click this button which is going to align the bottom of the tab to the top of the larger square. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this bottom one. I'm going to select the bottom tab and then I'm going to select the larger square. I'm going to go over here to align it horizontally and this time I'm going to align the top of the tab to the bottom of the larger square and that's going to set that up there. Now this tab I need to rotate 90 degrees and then once I do that it's the same process for alignment. I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees as well. So if I select this tab and then select the large rectangle I'm going to align um, vertically this time and then I'm going to click this button which is going to take the left side of the uh, tab and align it to the right side of the box and then I'll do the opposite over here. So we will align vertically and then align the right side to the left side of the box and now I have this, uh, this shape. Then I'm going to come over here and take the scissor tool and I'm just going to remove the vectors here. So what I end up with is this uh, plus sign shape here. Now I have to do the same thing. I have to create dog bone fillets in the corners here because when I press this tab inside of this pocket I want it to go all the way down. And, and if I didn't do that it would be it would only allow me to go so deep because my corner 
uh, is going to have a radius in it from my end mill because I can't make a sharp corner with a quarter inch end mill. So we're going to use the same fillet tool. We're going to leave the settings the same. And what we'll do is come back here and put a fillet on the bottom of every tab, just like that. Now, on this one, I did the same thing. I took uh, some text and I just marked off uh, what's what. So I have 148, 147, 6, and 5. Uh, on this, what I'm going to do when I uh, mill this out, and you'll see in the video, I'm actually going to use a V carve bit and I'm going to engrave these numbers into this piece specifically. Uh, so that that way, because it's four sided, it's going to be very easy to mess up the orientation on it and uh, make it a little more difficult for me to determine uh, what tab is what size. So by engraving that in there, it's going to allow me to pull this off and then I know when I'm doing my test fits what the size is. Now, keep in mind, when you take this tab off of the machine and you measure it, depending on the accuracy of your machine, it may not be 1.48, it may be 1.46, uh, it could be 1.49. Uh, the actual measurement is going to vary based on your machine deflection, um, the tolerance of your machine, things like that. What's important though is since you are doing all your programming with your machine, uh, if you set this width up to, let's just say, 1.46 and it measures 1.48 but the fit is perfect uh, over here to what you want, then any tabs that you do in your project, you're just going to use this 1.46 setting. Even though it measured larger, this is the way you programmed it. And the difference between what you programmed and the actual measurement is variables within the material, the cutting bit, and your machine. But by setting it at 146, it gives you the fit you want. So that's what you're going to use for a tolerance. So in other words, if you had to make a tab uh, let's just say you were doing something a little bit larger uh, and you had a, uh, a tab that was going to be, um, let's go uh, 0.723 in height, and let's just say it was a 6-inch wide tab. So, and you know that um, that's your pocket, right? So we're going to go ahead here. We'll put uh, fillets on it, dog bone fillets. All right, so that's the pocket you're cutting out in one piece of material. Now you've got a tab that you have to make that's going to fit into that. So we're going to make the 6 inches by uh, 0.72 in height. All right, so that would represent the tab. Let, let's, um, I can actually draw a bigger piece around it just so it makes more sense. Uh, let me do this. Okay, and so this tab, this is the bigger piece. This tab needs to fit inside this pocket. And I know that I programmed 1.46 and that gave me the fitment that I like. All I need to do is I know that the, I, my original size was 1.5 inches and 1.46 gave me the fitment. So I have to subtract four thousandths from this dimension here. So I'm going to go back to my rectangle. Instead of it being um, a width of uh, 6 inches, I'm going to do 6 inches minus 0.004 and click Apply. And that'll make the total 5.996. All right, so if I were to, now I could take the scissor tool and I can cut that, and there's my tab. So you'll want to create your tab separately with a separate vector. Size it the way you want and then use the scissor tool to join it to your larger piece. And you can see if I bring this down here and align it up centered and we zoom in really far, you could see that the line is slightly smaller on that. We're only talking about 4,000, so it's, it's not a lot, but that would give you a nice snug fit on that. So that's how you, you're going to use this gauge. Uh, you're going to cut out your pockets. These pockets are going to determine the height of the pocket. So again, when you fit this tab in and you decide, you know what, I think uh, 0.725 gave me the best fit vertically and 1.46 gave me the best fit on the width, then whenever you create a pocket, 
you're going to add five thousandths to it in the height. And whenever you create a tab, you're going to subtract four thousandths in the width. And that's how you're going to use this gauge to determine the best fit and the best settings for your project. So now we'll go over to the machine, we'll cut it out, and I will show you how I use it in the end after everything is cut out.